Uh, Juice Award, kind of last uh, one of fall camp. We'll do a little bit of some tomorrow, but uh, it's kind of a coaching for some today that get handed them out. So Edwards gave it to David Gusta. I think mean, David has elevated his game. And Wednesday night, he was one of those guys that just played with such great effort. I know he talked about running the ball already. Coach Kreiner gave it to Jare Williams. Keeps getting better and better. Coach Witt gave it to Xavier Thorpe. For a young guy through the first three weeks, he's been phenomenal on our offensive line. And Coach Caster, you got to give it to a running back, so he gave it to DP. Didn't get a chance to ask you this about uh, on Wednesday. Does Noosey's not going to be on hands team anytime soon, is he? <laughs> Did he tell you that? No, but we've seen now two in the last year. Uh, no, I would, that's not the plan, but hands team is about people you trust. And if you're the guy we trust to go out there in a big moment, we put RJ on the field last year, so we'll see. I think he bobbled it, too. I think Coop had to save him, didn't he? Coop saved him. There's no doubt. RJ forgets that moment. Yeah, well, um, you know, for you guys now, you're looking at one scrimmage uh, kind of still left to go. What's kind of the big thing you still want to work out in the uh, the next scrimmage before you get into kind of the game prep for Portland State? Yeah, just coming off of Wednesday night, it's execution. You know, the things that hurt ourselves, good teams don't do that, right? They're, they're fundamentally sound. They don't have pre- and post-snap penalties. They're doing their job to the maximum. Those are the things that we need to really start elevating, right? As Like I said, we talked about these final two weeks, getting that team on the same page. It'll be kind of the last little showcase before we take down a lot of the physicality and start to get ready. You know, we've obviously talked a lot about the quarterback battle, and you said, you know, that's something you'll decide after Saturday. Just kind of curious where things stand, uh, especially at running back, and kind of if you have an idea of who's going to be the starter on, uh, on game one. You know, we do feel like we got four really capable guys. I mean, I think they've started to separate a little bit. Um, but I think Saturday will be another big day before I really comment there. But, uh, you know, carrying the ball, you know, Wayshon and Leo have been really different. I mean, they just really have just their vision and their ability to make cuts. And it's hard to see who can win past contact, right? And I think that's Javinsky's strength, right? And DP is just an ultimate guy that you just rely on in every crutch moment. So uh, I think those guys have done really well. And I think all four of them will factor into something during the season. And then just real quick, anything uh, to note with Ansel and uh, Chris and Jamori missing the last couple practices? No, those guys should hopefully be uh, you know, just precautionary, keeping them out till Monday, and then we'll be back for the kind of two-week sprint to game day. I know the quarterbacks, you have a decision coming uh, in a few days, but just curious if either of those guys have kind of stood out or kind of made your decision any easier the last few days. Well, I'm taking bribes from you two to see who gets the first uh, information. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, it comes down to decision making. It comes down to getting us in the right play. I've said this before last year with Cam. I mean, those guys got a lot of freedom out there to change the play at any time to a situation they look. You know, we kind of chart who's getting us in the right looks, who's getting us in the looks that aren't great for those things. So that's just the operation that we're looking for out of those guys. And, you know, John continues to make strides off script. And I think Zevi just continues to battle in every, every phase of it. So I've been impressed with both of them and excited for Saturday. I'm curious about Tony Freeman as a receiver. It seems like he has receiver, or the returner spot, you know, under control, but just kind of what you've seen out of him as a receiver. As a wide receiver? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think Tony's a not just a take-the-top-off speed guy, but he's a playmaker with the ball in his hands. I know a lot of, you know, we talk about the vertical stretch, Tony Freeman, but I'm talking about the lateral stretch, like on the, on the bubbles and the quick screens. Him being able to take that ball and, and create some big explosive plays that way too. So he's been really, really good. Um, we're working to make him a complete receiver, blocking and all those things, but uh, Tony's going to be a guy we can count on. As far as what you imagined maybe at the start of fall camp and to this point, are you at that kind of benchmark point where you were like, okay, this is what I wanted from those guys, I got what I wanted, or are you still like we can see more? Well, I think you can always see more because the team, we just got to keep getting better. Um, but like I said, Wednesday night was a little bit of the pinnacle. A lot of the things that we do uh, have been dialed down the last two days. But I want our guys to understand, like, when you're out there, you're not tired. Stop telling yourself you're tired. You know, we've been extending drives, O-line being on the field for 8 to 10 to 12 plays at a time just in case we need that. Um, so that's the little things that we're focusing on now. Um, but it's about grit. It's about toughness. And I think this team has it. As far as the receiver group, are there specific guys that you've seen recently that have that grit and toughness or you've seen growth out of them? Well, I think Chris Hudson's consistency, you know, was just kind of maybe a little bit of a one question we had coming into the fall. And he's really answered that uh, the last 10 days. Been really happy with Chris. Uh, Shaq's ultra consistent. And I think those inside three guys, you know, Chris Barnes has a little bit of a sprained thumb, but he should be back mid next week. So I uh, think we got about six to seven guys that can really play. And I've said this a lot that, you know, we're going to rotate a lot of guys in there to make sure we're fresh and fast. 
Anything specifically you're looking for tomorrow for scrimmage or anything you want to try out? Is it experimental or is it just kind of run in, you know? No, I think we've tried, you know, I've said this, we've tried, you know, the O-line combinations and guys are more settled down so we can execute, right? So, you know, trying different guys, different places. I want to see what they can do. And I've told the coaches, I want to see these guys play fast. We're going to pare down the scheme. You get to practice 14 in fall camp. You have the whole system in your mind. And, and we only take a fraction of that into each game. So I want it pared down. I want to see these guys play fast. I want to see guys eliminate hesitation so we can see their best. You talked about the defensive line, and you know we saw the disruption they were able to make a couple of days ago. Where have they grown the most this fall camp? Well, I think just because it's not a group of individuals, I think rushing the passer together, I've really seen their physicality grow, right? And I, I do think we got a good offensive line, so if those guys can be disruptive against our guys, I feel comfortable, you know, each and every week that we can have a advantage there at the defensive front. So, you know, Khalil Laufel got a pick the other night. I mean, we got to had Noosey dropped another one, right? So we're working on that. But uh, at the end of the day, these guys are having fun. They're playing together, and same thing. We're going to rotate a ton of guys to keep those guys fresh. Uh, Gusta getting getting the juice player today. How has he particularly grown this this fall camp? Well, I would say how he's grown over the course of his career is just tremendous. You know, I think he's matured a lot. I think he has a great vision for what he wants to become, and he's going out there and attacking it every day. And consistency off the field leads to consistency on the field. And Dave is one of those guys that I'm really proud of. You know, you want your D linemen to be a little edgy, a little tough, a little physical, and that's what Dave brings to this football team, and we love it. Going into your final scrimmage, and you talked about defensive communication being the next step. Who has stepped up this week to kind of to ease that process? Well, I think we've noticed a million times that when KT's out there, our defense runs very smooth. You know, so Keith Brown needs to step up to get to that point. Wes Steiner needs to step up. Frank Cassano to make sure those guys have those levels of trust um, around them. So Jackson Latamua in week three has, has been phenomenal just as far as being really comfortable in his role. And I think he's really elevated us at that strong safety position. All right, guys. Thank you. Go Cougs.